In this video, we'll show how to fetch and display data from an API. So here you can see that we're looping over data and it's coming from this mysterious page data, which is connected through the load function in page.server.ts. And here we're loading it from the Pokemon API. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. Let's go ahead and build this step-by-step. -step. We're going to use the Pokemon API at pokeapi.co. It is free and easy to use. There are a couple quirks to it, but we'll handle those. So if we go to pokeapi.co slash api slash v2 slash Pokemon, you'll see that we get an array with the first, uh, I believe it's 20 Pokemon. Yeah, so it does uh, 20 as the limit by default. You can make it limit, say three, so it gets a lot fewer. You can make it 10,000, so it gets all of them. We'll go ahead and start with just the basic 20 for now. Let's take this step by step until we get into our full code. So let's go ahead first and we'll copy this and hard code it here. So we'll go const uh, monsters equals, and then we'll just put these in an array and then we'll loop through them. Each monsters as monster and we'll do monster.url as the key for now. And then, yeah, just h1 monster.name. So here we go. And we're displaying the first three that we have hard coded here. Now let's go ahead and get more from the API. So we'll do a naive version of this first. So we'll change this from a const to a let. And then we'll go ahead and fetch and this will grab the first 151 and put that result in the monsters array. All right, so we've got the first 151 there. And that's cool, but this is not actually how uh, SvelteKit wants us to handle this. So we have here a list of 150 Pokemon. However, if we go to the network tab, and we see what's originally displayed, what's initially displayed is only three. And so that means that when this is slow, you'll see this for a while, and then eventually, 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 all right, see all these things being loaded? All right, finally, we have what we actually need to see. So this defeats the entire purpose of server-side rendering. And so we need to do something special within SvelteKit to make our loading work with server-side rendering. So the special magic sauce that lets SvelteKit load your data for SSR is going to be a file called pluspage.ts or .js. And we can also add a .server in there later. We'll get to that soon. All right, so there is a function there called load, and that is an async function, and we won't give it any arguments for now, but basically anything you do in here will happen on the server side as well. So this will be uh, server rendered, which means our SSR will work. We won't have this pop in. And so let's go ahead and first figure out how we are getting the data from here to here, so let's go ahead and comment it out this fetch here and just bring over our hard-coded monsters and we'll get the fetch there in a second. So we have our monsters and we're going to return an object with monsters as one of the keys. And we're getting an error here because we don't have anything for monsters, but we can't just say const monsters equals from load or whatever. We have to use SvelteKit's special uh, syntax. So we say export let data. And then we put data.monsters here. And believe it or not, this will actually get our monsters. And I'm going to put this back on no throttling so we don't have to wait. All right, here we go. We have the three monsters coming in from 
the load function here and being put in here. But we don't want just that, we want to do this fetching. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and we say await, and then we're going to fetch the, uh, we won't do limit three, we'll do limit 151. And then here, this will be our response. And just like in this fetch, we have to get the response.json and then get the data.results. So we'll go ahead and get here and we'll call this JSON. I find that uh, a little easier to understand what it is. And then we're gonna return for monsters, we're gonna get json.results. And if we, all right, it has already loaded here. And the cool thing, we reload this we look at the local host here and it is correct. It has all the monsters that we need. And that is despite us doing an asynchronous request to the API, SvelteKit just takes care of all of that for us. And we can remove this monsters array. Fantastic, so we are loading data from an API and using it in SSR. One thing to note is that right now we're using the native fetch function, and that's not currently causing any problems. However, SvelteKit has added some stuff to the fetch function that prevent problems in the future. And we can access that version of fetch by putting it here in the arguments. So we've got everything working. We're using the correct fetch, but we've accumulated a couple TypeScript errors. and they're all of the type where it doesn't like that it's implicitly in any type. It wants a specific type. And so what we can do here, so this is data. It's coming from the page data here. So what we can do is we need to import a type page data that is created by SvelteKit for us. And it's in dot slash dollar sign types which means if we're using the special plus page dot svelte file type, then it'll automatically have certain of these in dot slash dollar sign types. And you'll see in a second that there's some for plus page dot ts as well. And there are different types. So uh, only certain ones are available for certain special uh, naming conventions. So here we put in data as page data, and then here we go. It knows the data is monsters, pretty cool. And it knows that by looking at what's returned from this load function. Okay, so let's do the second one and we'll wrap this entire async thing and we'll say satisfies, that is a new TypeScript feature and page load. And once again, we'll import from dot slash dollar sign types. For our final bit of loading, we'll want to display the number of the Pokemon. And we can get a very brittle version of that by using the index. So let's uh, put these at paragraphs and we can do the index here and do plus one. And that works for our current call. However, it's very brittle. If we load something out of order or if we load things not starting from the first Pokemon, this breaks. So we will not do this. Instead, we will grab the actual ID of the Pokemon. The Pokemon API makes this a little more difficult because it doesn't include the ID directly. However, it does include the ID in the URL. And I've checked this does work as an ID throughout the entire system of the API. So what we need to do is here, we're not just gonna return the json.results, we're going to have monsters, and here, json.results.map. And here, we will start with a monster, and it's complaining because this is a type uh, of any, so we'll just put in index monster here, and create this type index monster, which Yep, it knows how to autocomplete that pretty well. So we'll be wanting to return a version of the monster that yes, it has the monster name, yes, it has the monster URL, but it also has an ID. 
and what is that ID gonna be? So we're gonna wanna define it and grab it from the URL. So we'll need to do a little bit of processing here. And so uh, first let's go ahead and get the split URL. And so we're gonna split the monster URL along the slashes. And we can get the ID from this. And now we'll go ahead and use the ID here. And reload and uh oh, we've got undefined here. That is a problem. Ah, and that's because we are putting the json.results without using the monsters array that we created. Save this here and fantastic. We have things displaying as we want. So to recap, we're now using the Pokemon API to load all of the monsters. And we could do it using fetch right here in the component file. However, that doesn't work with SSR. And so to use SSR properly, we need to use the uh, .ts file. And we'll talk more about the file naming in future lessons, but we need to use the load function here. And now we can call to any API we want and it'll work with SSR. So we get the response, we get the .json from there, and then we do a little bit of processing on it to add in the ID. And then we return this and now we know that data has monsters on it, which is pretty nice to use as a developer. And then we can loop through those monsters. And actually, let's go ahead and change the key to monster ID, since that's the part of the monster URL that's unique. And this is a great start. In the next episode, we're going to style these Pokemon and the generations so that they look much better.